Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker, and yesterday I was just putting the final touches on some updated courseware at CBT Nuggets regarding the Palo Alto Firewall at the professional level. And I thought to myself, you know, it's a little bit sad when a course is done for me because I've got to put that cool technology away for a while or off to the side for a while as I work on the next thing. And so I thought to myself, well, let's have one last hurrah and let's do this. For individuals who are just starting with the Palo Alto Firewall and aren't sure exactly how to get it all bootstrapped and all set up, I thought to myself, before I put this gear away, let me make a few videos in a playlist here on YouTube that will give an individual, if you want it, the instructions on how to take a brand new firewall with a blank configuration and get it up and running and functional in a very short period of time. And that's what this set of videos in this playlist is all about. So let me give you a high level overview of what we're gonna cover in this playlist. So to start, we're gonna bring up a Palo Alto firewall. This is a little PA440 I have here in my lab environment. And what we'll do is we'll do a factory reset so there's virtually nothing on it other than the defaults. And then I wanna walk you through step-by-step step, getting the basic IP configuration for management of this Palo Alto firewall via its management interface. So that'll be our first video, getting it up and bootstrapped. Then once it's up, we'll walk through configuring security zones and layer three interfaces along with their IP addresses based on this topology plan. And with the IP addresses in place, the firewall knows how to get to those local networks, but it doesn't know how to get to the rest of the internet. So the next video, we'll walk through configuring default IP routes. We'll do some static routes, one through service provider A and another one through service provider B. And then if we want clients to connect and be able to go through our firewall, we're gonna set up DHCP services so they can get IP addresses from the firewall itself. And then if those clients want to forward traffic through the firewall, we'll configure source address translation so they can be translated from a 10.10.0 address space to a routable address as they go out to and through the internet. However, even with address translation set up, the firewall has a default attitude of no, it's not going to allow traffic unless there are permissions. And that's why the next video is all about setting up initial security policy rules to permit the initial flows of traffic from clients on this network to go out to the internet. So at this point, we have a functional firewall, but there's one other really important aspect too, and that is decryption of HTTPS traffic. Because if a client is going out to the internet, and most of our traffic these days is using encryption services with some flavor of TLS, we want the ability for the firewall to intercept and be able to take a look at the actual payloads. And to do that, we need to implement decryption. So as an add-on video, I also want to walk you through setting up SSL forward proxy, which is the implementation of decryption for the HTTPS traffic, so the firewall can actually see the payload of the packets and be able to enforce policy. So my friend, if that sounds like something that you are interested in learning about, please join me in this playlist. So in each of the videos in the playlist, I'll have a link for the playlist itself. And that way, if you jump in, you can go right to the beginning of the playlist and pick it up anywhere you need to. And if you want a deeper, more thorough dive into any or all of these topics, please feel free to check out our content over at cbtnuggets.com. But for now, if you're in, I'm in, and I'll see you, my friend, in the very next video.